Atem. Yes, Ali, how are you? I'm back, man. I'm back. I think from my smile, you know how excited I am for today's show. Uh-huh. I'm sure you are excited. I'm sure you're very excited about it. But why are you excited about it? I'm excited because uh <laughs> because we're talking about something very special to my heart, uh, something that uh, uh inspired me in the 90s and uh, mm-hmm. today today we're going to meet someone very special we always saw him on the screen and today uh, we get to know him better inshallah yes inshallah so with that let us just not keep our uh, audience waiting Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to Chat Away in Ummati Station. How is everybody doing? Hey guys, are you ready everybody, for today? Everybody, I think uh, everybody's doing well and excited uh, for today's show. Uh, I think we did uh, a show previously about uh, sports, uh, different types of sports, mm-hmm. but I think today is very exciting because it's a unique uh, sport that we're going to talk about. and also uh our guest today is also special all the way from uh, LA mm-hmm. so who's our guest today ali so our guest for today is here we go mestre amen santo who was born in 1965 and raised in the neighborhood of liberdade i hope i got it right Uh, in the heart of Salvador Bahia at young age of seven, while walking to the market with his mother he was suddenly thrown into a capoeira circle by one of the most notable capoeira masters and that's when capoeira became his life and later on he moved to the United States and became one of the first capoeiristas in America and then Hollywood ho ho came calling they would feature capoeira for the first time in the fox movie only the strong and he not only choreographed it but he also acted in it this opened more doors for him and he went on to make more films plays theater record cd dvd he opened more schools and performed in major venue worldwide <sighs> let us welcome Hey, Mr. Amen Santo. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Can you guys hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, yes, hear we, hear, well. we hear you yeah. perfectly. Welcome to the show, Mr. And uh, it's an honor to see you and have you on the show. Yeah, it's great. Well, actually, uh, uh, I can see myself, but I cannot see you guys for some reason. I can hear you perfectly. and i can see my myself in a small screen i don't know if that's how uh, may, maybe maybe if you can scroll it down i don't know if you'll be able to see us <coughs> you can scroll it down yeah uh yeah it doesn't yeah just see your net bro- broadcast but I, i see a black screen and myself but oh uh, but can you see me okay 
Yeah, uh, by, by the way, did it work before? Uh, were you able to yeah, see it? Yeah, it worked before. It's just okay. when you started introducing... Let us do one thing. Uh, uh, if you can, like, hang up and join again. It's okay. You know, it's a live show. So I can hang up and, and yeah, join yeah. again? Yeah. yeah. Quick. Not a problem, one yes. Second. Technology. Technology. <laughs> oh, but but trust me, man, we have fans here now. Everybody is like, hello, hi. Oh, let me just post that once uh, Mestre is back. Yes, sure. Okay, here we go. Can you see here us we now? Go. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. What incredible honor that is to be here with you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. The, the, on, think, uh, the honor is ours. What do you think, Hatem? Yes, definitely <laughs> the honor is ours. I think, Mystery, uh, when we first uh, contacted you, you were wondering, what are these guys from the Middle East want from me? You know, how did they find me? How did they know about me? But uh, you have a lot of fans in the Middle East, uh, Mystery, and... Uh, oh. Especially through, especially through the movie uh, and the sport itself, there are a lot of young people who are inspired with capoeira and practice capoeira. And maybe today it, it's an opportunity to tell us more about capoeira because um, maybe young people only see it on the screen and practice it, but they don't know the history uh, behind Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, capoeira has been, you know, it's part of a popular culture now but you know people they need to remember if they go back not that long ago maybe 50 years ago you know capoeira was primarily in brazil especially in bahia salvador bahia and not yes. that many people were practicing capoeira it was very selective you know it was a smaller group of people practicing because they loved the art you yes. know, especially there was a lot of negative uh, connotation. People that used to look up with it as like something negative because it was born from slavery. And, and, and because that, you know, that, that negative past that we had with slavery, which wasn't something that was pleasant. Uh, yes or Africans in Brazil, you know, pe you know, people continue to think that capoeira was something negative, even though African people brought, you know, they were the ones that really built that country. So Brazil, it is what it is today because of the Native Americans and Africans that were able to, to build that country. So there are a lot of prejudice yes. against capoeira <clears throat> growing up. I, you know, I experienced a lot of uh, prejudice, you know, people, even even my parents sometimes were like, you know, are you sure you want to be doing this? Only, you know, gangsters, people lower class can do that, you know, and, and so there was this concept that capoeira was something bad, but even though it's something that saved a lot of lives and and, and is a symbol of a black resistance in Brazil. And yeah. now, Maestre, I want to ask you something. The first time I started training capoeira was in the Far East, and I had an American uh, instructor. And the first time I met him, I, I told him, I want to learn the Brazilian capoeira. And he said, I don't teach the Brazilian capoeira, I teach the Angola capoeira. And that right. made me very confused. And the style was even different than the Brazilian capoeira. So what's the difference between the two? Maybe if you give us a little bit of history so that yeah. uh, the guys would understand. Well, basically, capoeira was born from African experience. You know, even in Africa, of course, things will change over time. You know, of course, yes. the base of capoeira definitely came from Africa. And in Brazil, because of, ne of the necessity of adapt and do things differently, capoeira took another shape. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so regardless if it was developed in Brazil or brought from Africa, is an African influence, you know? Yes. So it was created by African people, regardless if it was done in Brazil or, you know, because there's a, here's a lot of, I'll, it's still people are debating and contemplate, oh, it was brought from Africa, it was developed in Brazil. Obviously the base came from Africa because yes. it wasn't just born out of nowhere. They has to have some kind of structure in order to to have capoeira. So, but in Brazil, they had to go through a lot of change. Like if you look capoeira, started watching videos and go back 50 years ago, 60 years ago and look capoeira now. Mm. It's completely, it keeps changing because capoeira is always evolving and changing, yeah. adapting. So when we talk about Angola, being the traditional way and regional, not so traditional. I don't think there's such a thing. They are all African yes. based. You know, they all came from the same, you know, necessity. Of course, Master Bimba created create a couple of regional later, but still he was Angolero. He, he, you know, he, he had to use the couple of Angola, Angola elements in order to create a couple of regional as well. But when you're talking about, you know, especially in America, people sometimes they, uh, of course, they, it's a black culture, so they want to claim, which is rightfully so, you know, because it's, it's important to be proud of what, what, what the things that we have. And, yes. but I think Capoeira for me is one, and we have different ways of expressing how we play, how we, you know, delegate, how, you know, but overall capoeira, it is what it is, one. And we all have find a way of how to, uh, to express ourselves and bring the best out of ourselves uh, in, in a meaningful way, you know, and to empower ourselves, empower, empower others as well. So, so what's, what's the connection between capoeira and music? Well, music is the heart and soul of capoeira, right? And when you play capoeira, you're actually talking about history. So it's all about this connection between the present and the past. Uh, We are here now, but we have our ancestors that went through a lot of struggles to keep capoeira alive. And the music in capoeira, and even uh, I'll go back to slavery, even when the capoeirista fought against the Portuguese or the Dutch, you know, music was a big, big part of it because they pray, they sing, you know, from that place singing, and praying they were able to create more energy and courage to you know to to fight battles even though sometimes they didn't have a weapon so you had to use the body mm. use the body to mm. as as a weapon you know so they had to be mentally physically and spiritually ready to do that and i think the music is part of that connection even today when we sing we sing about zumbi you think about Mesh Pastinha, Mesh Bimba, all the people that made like a huge impact in our lives. And so, so music is the heart and soul of capoeira. But if, uh, I'll go back a little bit, the birimbau, for instance, the birimbau wasn't part of capoeira. You know, wasn't, traditionally wasn't, because the birimbau itself was an instrument that the African used to heal the body. They use the vibrations to heal the body. You know, so it was a healing instrument. But like, again, in Brazil, you know, Africans are used to attract attention to sell merchandise, you know, walking in on the street. And you, using the bidding bow? Using the bidding bow. And 
So it started to like have a different meaning. And and over time, it kind of got lost because people didn't start, they didn't continue using the beating bow as a healing tool, you know? And so, but, so capoeira, the beating bow came to capoeira late on and that once again was the manifestation of the singing, the playing, the clapping, and before you know, that's what we have today. But just you know, the beating bow is a healing instrument, and that's why we feel so good when you play in a harder. Mm. <laughs> oh, you mentioned you mentioned now the word harder. Can you explain a little bit about harder? What it is? Harder is a circle. Literally, is a circle. But especially in African culture, a lot of rituals are done in a circle, you know, in a, in a circle. And in capoeira, it's a, a month when you play, it's about keep energy flowing in a circle. Mm. And when you clap and when you sing and you keep the energy in the center, so the players, they are able to, to manifest and, you know, things that sometimes they don't even know they can do in a game. That's what we call game when you play the harder. Mm, yeah. Because the music and the energy of the community around the circle will give that power, that energy that you can perform in a way that is beyond just yourself you're connected with the higher self you know with not just playing capoeira from the physical uh aspect but also there's a spirituality there that you're able to manifest and and do things that sometimes they even know how you did it mm. but it's really about a way of connect with yourself you know when you connect with yourself, you can do things that sometimes you even know uh, how to explain. Maestre, I will take you a little bit back to the, uh, the, the poems and the songs that are used in the capoeira. Uh, is it difficult to maintain the same old songs? Or do you have young people now uh, who are practicing capoeira trying to make it more modern and introducing uh, new lyrics to, to, to these songs? Well, songs is about the moment, it's about, it's about reality, you know, it's about what's happening. If you, if you, if you think about Capoeira, all the, you know, back in the day, you know, all the, the masters or teachers, they were able to narrate, they were narrators mm. talking about what was happening in, in the Hoda at that particular moment. Mm. So it wasn't something programmed, but it was like something happened, they started singing about. Wow. You know, they were talking about whatever is happening at that moment. Mm -hmm. And and that, well, you know, and, and then people repeat that whatever happened that day. And that, in a way, became a tradition, right? But sometimes you sing songs is out of context because it was a song that was made for that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Not something that, you know, you sing like 50, 100 years later, you know, and people are like, oh, but it doesn't make any sense. Why you sing about this guy or this person now but there's no con, you know, but if you know the history, you understand there was a time and place that something happened and somebody was singing about. So I think Capoeira, it was always going to be changing over time, you know, yes. and, and, just, and just like life, imagine if you don't create, if you don't, if you don't allow life to, continue manifesting and changing and 
you know, we'll be stuck. Mm. You know, we'll be completely stuck. So I think we need to preserve the past, you know, still sing about the past, but at the same time, understand that we face different challenges today. We have different issues and people, especially younger people, they're expressing that. Mm. And that's what, what I love about Capoeira because it unites the past and the present. So you can bring your own voice. You can sing about it, you know, because the future generation, they're gonna be able to understand and connect what happened during slavery, after slavery, and then what's happened today and what's gonna happen eventually tomorrow. So I think it's a connection. I think I love Capoeira because it's a community thing, but also bring the best out of yourself. So you bring your individuality, your voice, and that's what Capoeira allows you to do. So um, you being one of the first Capoeiristas in the United States, I'm mm -hmm. sure, you know, always the first time means a challenge. So uh, w have you ever faced any challenges at the beginning? Uh, many challenges, right? You know, uh, I, I can go on and on and on and on. But I remember when I first uh, moved to, to I uh, actually moved to New York City. That, that was before I came to LA. But first challenge for me was adapting uh to the cold weather that was <laughs> terrifying <laughs> you know i was in new york uh, you know and at one point i was very depressed because it was very cold and every time i stepped out the sky was completely gray mm. and freezing i didn't know the language so it was a struggle communicating talking to people so i felt very lonely um and just trying to really understand what was li what life was going to be for me from that point forward and so doing all that and i remember that i was so shy that i was terrified even trying to order food because <laughs> you know <laughs> and then I remember there was this Chinese restaurant uh, on the Bronx. That's where I was living at the time. Mm. And and I heard someone say, uh, can I have beef with broccoli? And mm. and I memorized that, you know. <laughs> oh, so so you, you didn't speak English at that time? And not, not at all. Mm -hmm. Zero. And, uh, and I memorized that beef with broccoli and that... <laughs> first month that's what i ate because because <laughs> i didn't want to you know you know i was i was young i was 19 and and i didn't want to make food of myself i wanted to look cool and then uh you know beef with broccoli i was i was sit very fast and that's what i ate and then eventually you know i got more comfortable <laughs> and and i wanted to do all the things i wanted to order all the foods and that was one thing. And then later on, I moved to, I drove 3,000 miles to, from uh, from New York to LA, you know, and and I slept in a car for three, oh. maybe four months because I didn't know anyone and the money was, wasn't wow. quite there yet, you know, <laughs> struggling financially, trying to figure it out, you know, and, and then I started like doing performances and then I started going to uh, tournaments, like martial art tournaments, because I think I, I, nobody knew what Capoeira was. Mm. So I started going to tournament, but then uh, I started like competing, but every time I, I, I swept someone, I did all this stuff that nobody had no idea what it was <laughs> at that point. They're like, what? This guy's made this thing up. <laughs> He's making things up. Ma and, Maestro, and that, I, that is not fair. That is not fair. You have uh, skills that cannot be used uh, in the competition. So most right. probably people <laughs> who are wondering, where, where is this guy from? 
Well, you know what happened? I, I got disqualified every single time. I never won anything because of a disqual. Uh, it's all this, Sweeping. this is a foreign movement, so you have no idea what you're doing. And mm -hmm. I got disqualified. But wow. from there, I start, people started getting curious. And they'll come and talk to me and, and ask questions. And, and before we know, there was this company called Panther Productions. Panther. And Panther Production was uh, they they made like martial arts VHS. Uh huh. So yes. you do like a whole uh, instruction in and there will. I had a friend of mine, Neil says, well, that he he came. Yeah, you actually drove together, and he was a capoeirista too, and and we did a whole series in two days, you know, because. The, the company, they're, they're very clever. They say, okay, I want to save money. So we worked very hard in two days. My God, it was so intense that my body was aching for two weeks after the, the shooting. Mm. And I can barely put my seatbelt on, you know, because I was so sore because we worked too much, for, you know, like for two days. And, you know, and and just the struggle of learning the language and, and adapting to a new culture, identify who I was as a black man, because mm -hmm. there was a lot of this, you know, are you African-American? Are you Afro-Brazilian? Mm -hmm. Are you Latin? Are you this? Are you that? A lot of labors, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> it's really coming to terms that I am who I am and i do what i do and i'm here to make a difference and you made a difference <laughs> <laughs> thank you i think uh, uh mystery there's an uh, there's a debate between is capoeira an art or is it a self-defense sport and also the question uh, that that is why uh Capoeira is not among the sports that are being uh, competitive in the Olympics, for example. Well, capoeira is everything to begin with. What, what, you know, some people, they, that's the thing about capoeira is so complex. People can practice capoeira mm -hmm. in and be more connected with the traditions, with uh, the rituals, you know, especially, you know, in the Capoeira Angola, which is, they focus a lot on that. You know, the music, uh, there, there's this ancestral, uh, ancestral uh, connection <clears throat> that I think makes a little bit challenging to become like Olympic uh, sports, right? Even it's not just like like any other traditional art that we just compete and that's it. When you go to a capoeira class, you learn how to sing, you learn history, you you know you learn there's acrobatics, there's fighting, there's dancing. That a lot of that's the thing so complex that you cannot just say it's a sport. Is music, is dance, is is a it's, that's what makes capoeira you know so special, because it's so different, and some people are trying to to just do sports and just be more like eliminate more the certain areas, certain traditions, and just be more like the physical, have that physical, uh, just 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 the physicality, capoeira's physicality, in order to to become. Uh, more uh qualified to be in the olympics which which is fine uh, i believe there's a space for everything but i don't think capoeira can be defined by one thing there are many ways and many things going on with capoeira uh but even in mma you know there are a lot of people using capoeira mm. 
the G that before even MMA existed, there was Vale Tudo in, um, in Brazil, and there were yes. several people who fought against the Graces and uh, different, you know, uh, and they were all capoeiristas. Zulu, for instance, was one of them. Uh, uh, Mestre Hulk, there were several people, Mestre Boa Gente also. Um, but w what I'm trying to say, there will be a space for capoeira at some point in the Olympics, but we do gonna have to change a lot of a lot of things in order to to, to make that happen. Because uh, I I can I can be wrong, but I can I cannot see to have the whole music music and and rituals and aspect within this whole olympic uh uh concept yeah mm. now l let us shift into the movies how did you get into the movies <laughs> into hollywood well it's it's a funny story and you know uh first of all about six months before uh, the, this whole movie thing uh, started like we started talking about the movie. So Mark, uh, actually one of his best friend, uh, Earl White, he was training capoeira with me, and, and Earl is incredible. He is incredible martial artist. You know he some he basically introduced me to Mark Dacasco, and, and Mark yes. was at the time. He was heavily involved. His father is a is a martial art master, Sifu uh, L, and and basically he was looking for another art so he could he want to practice capoeira basically. So he started coming to my studio, which was in the base of the, the Santa Monica Airport at that time, and then we started training. And that was six months before the movie. Had no idea this was happening, and then we started talking. And about six or seven months later, there was a whole team that came by my studio, which was very small. And there was, you know, uh, there, there was a writer, uh, Steve. Sheldon Lettish, who, who did all the Van Damme movies, uh, came to my space saying, like, so, you know, oh, you really want to do a Capoeira movie? And we are looking for someone that we can, you know, get more information and and be uh, a, consult a consultant for the the story. So because we are about to develop the, the script. And then he asked me to do a demonstration. I got some few few students, and we started demonstrating, and and they like it, and they mm. and they decided to reveal me like about my life. At that time, I was teaching at, at a high school uh, where kids, you know, they were very very, you know. <laughs> bad is another word, but they were challenging, you know, they were struggling, you know, with gangs and drugs, all this stuff. And and I was teaching Capoeira and Capoeira was was really making a difference in the community. That's was in Watts, mm. which is South Central LA. And and, and we, I I, I, I think I read about the school that uh, it that the, the filming happened that school itself mm -hmm. had those uh, gangs in it, right? And that same yeah. school. Right. So that's how the, the whole idea came about as well, because talking about what was happening in my life at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, teaching high school, teaching like kids, they were very, there was me, misbehaving class. Uh, so all this started developing the script, talking about different things. And, and that's how in the film you see the whole it's based on a teacher going back to high to a high school to save you know mm -hmm. lives 
So yeah, yeah. So, so it's a little well, bit of your own story in it. Yeah, and so anyhow, we developed this story and then I got more and more involved. They said, okay, now we need to do, you know, the choreography, we need, you know, music and, 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 and then it's so, okay, how are we gonna do the whole, because even this opening here that you see now, mm -hmm. it was interesting because it wasn't in the movie. Because they were, at first it was gonna be just Mark and I doing capoeira. Only two And people. I told him like, you know, if you're gonna do a capoeira movie, we must have a hoda. You should have a circle where you have people singing, people playing capoeira, you know, so you can really understand what capoeira is about. Yeah. And so, so it took about three or four months. We were already in Miami and doing pre-production at that time. Mm -hmm. And and we finally convinced the, the producers to, uh, Mark also helped, like, it's like, no, listen, no, we need to do this. Now together we were able to encourage everyone to, uh, to get some more people. So I knew people in Florida uh, good friends, Mestre Mes Cesar, Mestre Pelé, all the, all the guys you see there doing capoeira, Branca de Neve, uh, Claudia. Uh, I call them and I say, you know, there's a, I'm working this movie, you know, I'm, I'm the choreographer, also I'm going to be acting on it. So, you know, love to have you guys come and so we're going to show them what a hoda looks like and then you go from there. So they all came, then we did a harder, and we when they saw the energy, <laughs> they, they got excited, like, wow, <laughs> you know, and they really love it. And then they wanted more, so we did the opening and the closing, and uh -huh. and yeah, but it you know that wasn't part of the movie until the you know took until we had to do a lot of talking to convince them to to be to do so. But I think it was perfect. The the mm -hmm. opening and the closing was like the best, uh, you know, yeah. uh, moment of the movie. Definitely. It was yeah, very very it, nice. It brings everything together. Yeah. Yes. I, yes, I think for for some people who don't know Mark De Cascos, uh, I think uh, he's a Hollywood actor and he acted in a movie. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember Double Dragon. Double Dragon. Double, and, and just lately, I think in 2019, there's uh, John Wick, yeah. Chapter 3. Yeah. That's where he acted uh, as a villain. Mm -hmm. so, so that's Mark Dacascos. And the movie, Hatem, I don't know if, you, if you're aware of the movie. It's been directed by uh, 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 Sheldon Lettich, I think, who, who co-written, uh, uh, I think, the screenplay of uh, the movie Bloodsport. That Van Damme actor. Blood spots. And also yes, he, yes. he co wrote Rambo Three for your Got information. So, so the same guy. Yeah. So it's a it's a small yeah. world. Yeah. My uh, my Maestre, uh, you did this movie in the in the nineties, right? Yeah. We started shooting the, on ninety and I believe we started re releasing 91, 92, something like that. So did you ever imagine that, uh, you know, uh, kids in the Middle East uh, in school <laughs> would watch this movie and then we'll have this interview with you after how many years? Three, oh, 27 years. Be, before before you answer that, let me just play a video <laughs> of, of myself and maybe a little bit of Hatim uh okay how, how we got inspired by this movie um of course the first time i learned uh, capoeira was through the movie and then i traveled to scotland and that's where uh, uh I, I i took a class so this is the class oh my god <laughs> so so that's me in black uh, t-shirt mm -hmm. wow <laughs> See, look, look, look how high I jumped. See, whoa, oh man. Almost. Can you do that, Hatim? Can you do that? <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so that was my little hoda. But, but again, this all inspired by you. That's why you are my mestre. <laughs> I would call you mestre Aww. for that reason. So, uh, yeah, so this is one of the 
Stars and uh, yeah. and most of those students didn't uh, do high jumps. I think uh, it was only me and this guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and this oh, is one. Wow. Of <laughs> and this is this was in Holland, uh, Netherlands. I was walking the street and I saw people doing the hoda and I said I want to join. So so I played with yeah. them. And I oh, I, nice. I I wasn't even wearing a proper clothes for, <laughs> for for that, but yeah, it's all good. But but it, it yeah, and I was thinking myself as Mark the Cascos. I don't know why I was. <laughs> well, the, the, the haircut is gonna be the same. And this is the other poor guy who's trying his best to do some kind of flip. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so this is uh, his trial. Oh, this is me doing nice. this. I think this is called Malandro, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I did this, it wasn't easy and it looked uh, so <laughs> it looked weird. But then uh, I tried. I don't know if this is a perfect pose or not. <laughs> well, you're doing great. It looks good. Yeah? It looks really good. Oh, I just, I just take, took a testimonial from, uh, from a master. Oh. But I think oh if you, but, but I think if you if you if you, if you look at uh, my recent Malandro, <laughs> you will say no. I think I think I think Ali, you need to get back. So so look at this. Okay, this is what I did. It looks terrible. <laughs> so yeah, inspired by only the strong and Mestre Amin. <laughs> I think uh, you brought uh, old memories, Ali. <laughs> oh, good, yeah. the good old oh, days. The good old days. I even remember I went to Brazil in 1998, yeah. and that was where a place where I started, you know, asking people, I, I want to see a hoda, I want to see capoeira. Uh, so th this is where I went. I had a martial art competition at that time. I'm, I'm the guy in the middle. So uh, I kept asking people, capoeira, capoeira. No one showed me anything there. I don't know why. why. <laughs> I was in a place called Peruibi. I think that was in Sao Paulo. Oh. Yeah, but I couldn't find any capoeira there. So I got disappointed. Yeah. Wow, incredible. Just, <laughs> just you know, I just remember, you know, um, after the movie, uh, I had a dance company and I was traveling. I was in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And, and, w we arrived in Singapore and there were at least 50, 60 teenagers waiting at the, the hotel because mm. they heard like that, well, I, I was coming with the company and everything. And, and they were like, Master Messi, can we teach us Paranawe? <laughs> and I started singing, right? Paranawe, Paranawe, Parana, you know? They said, no, 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 Paranawe, and they started Jinga. What, what was so interesting and funny uh -huh. is that for them, Capoeira was Paranawe. Mm, because yes. you heard the song Paranawe so much, they thought Capoeira itself was Paranawe. <laughs> and and then I actually taught a whole class for them, you know, they, they came to see the show. They were very happy because they had like a lot of capoeira in it. Mm. And but but anyhow, answer your question about impacting people globally, I had no idea that how this film was in, was gonna impact uh people, you know, in different parts of the world. You know mm. how they will connect and have this, you know, relationship with, with Capoeira. So, answer your question. That was a surprise, but I knew that Capoeira always had the, this potential mm. to, you know, to touch people in a very deep, uh, deep level. Uh, and in the Middle East, everywhere in the world now. It's amazing what's happened to Capoeira. It's, it's so amazing because people are doing all kinds of, uh, of work. They are empowering others. You know, they are helping people become better person you know, or better people or better human being. And uh, answer your question, I didn't, 
but I'm glad he did. <laughs> <laughs> and now, my, my, my story, I'm very much interested about the students uh, in the high school that you taught. And uh, you said that uh, they were going through difficulties, uh, whether it is uh, gangs or drugs and so on. What, what did Capoeira add to them? Mm. How did Capoeira change them? Because um, we don't want people just to think that Capoeira is just like another sport. Uh, it is more than that. Uh, so tell us, how did it impact uh, young people? Well, the main thing that I, I was working on at that time that was the focus of the whole project was yes. learning how to work together. Mm -hmm. cooperation, mm -hmm. self-esteem, you know, because a lot of, of the, the young, uh, young people that are working with, they have very low self-esteem because they came from homes with drug addicts, you know, alcoholics, you know, people with a lot of problems. So the, their self-esteem, they were so low, they, they need to do something positive to feel good about themselves, you know? And so we did all that. So we did uh, work, you know, with the music to connect with their inner self. We also did a lot of work collectively so they can learn how to have a dialogue without, you know, without always have to be fighting and have that kind of confrontation so they and also allow them to be angry and allow the anger to stay in a harder okay so yes. if you want to get more confrontation that's the time but when you're done here you're gonna shake hands mm -hmm. and you're gonna understand that we are different we have different opinions and we can move on with our life with our lives and so that was a lot of lessons that we were able to, I was able to teach them, just use the Hoda. You know, when you go inside the Hoda, it's life. So you're there, mm -hmm. fully present. Do all you have need to do. When you come out, just be ready to let it go. Whatever happened there, you just live there, you know, and just live life like this. You know, sometimes you're gonna have find, you're gonna find difficulties obstacles you know you gotta learn how to navigate and so what uh, for me the most meaningful teaching and learning was to see how they were able to at least start having a dialogue a conversation that was the hardest thing because people they were very divided and not really talking to one another and in couple of they started talking, you know, at least they have that ability to, to talk about it and, and be able to share their fear, their feelings, you know, and just, just, just starting the conversation. That, that for me was very profound. Um, I think there's a question by uh, uh, Dr. Haytham Barwani. <laughs> I think I think he's uh, trying to tell you that he is also a capoeirista. Did capoeira mi, milua di compasso is one of the strongest kicks? Is that a question? If the melo di compasso one of the strong kicks? Uh, I think I think maybe that's uh, yes. That's what he meant. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends. It can be the most dangerous uh, kick, but also depends who's kicking. Who's kicking? Yeah. Yeah, because yes. it, is it is it, it Hatem or Ali? <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you have like it can be a martelo, bens, a chapa, and it can be very powerful. It depends who's kicking, how they're kicking. Mm. You know, it's really elbow can be very painful. Yeah, these two fingers can be the best weapon. You know, yeah. if somebody goes blind. You know that's a weapon. Yes. Yes. And that that's yes. something they use a lot in capoeira, and, and especially in the old days, is to blind people with a poking wow. with the eye. fingers. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's really. I, I like Melua 
definitely powerful for sure. Hatim, do you know which one is Milua G Compasso from the picture you're seeing now? Uh, <laughs> I I forgot, man. I don't remember. I only re- I well, only remember I, I the ho- you, the holder and the jingle. Tra- I want you guys to go back training. <laughs> I, I'll offer you a class. We do a oh. virtual class for I, you guys. I would really? love to train under you. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm I'll, in. I I'm in. I'm in. When okay, do we start? So let's talk about <laughs> it because I have my. We need to work out the, the the times, everything. But I teach people, especially now with this pandemic. There's so many people from all over the world training on Zoom, and oh. training, you know, and. There's a way to do it, and I'll, I'll invite both of you so to come back to guys, <laughs> guys, viewers. Anybody is interested to join? Contact me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take the I'm money. A, I'm, I'm Ali. willing to teach you guys. Don't, don't Ali, the, if you really Ali, want the, to, just uh, we'll talk later. Then I can give the Zoom link and everything. Wow. The times you guys can just come in. Yeah, Ali, please sense. don't. Ali, please don't invite your friends. This is a special <laughs> offer for me and you only. Yes, yes. I'm privileged. I'm privileged by that. Now, now Mystery, uh, how do you get into ranks in Capoeira? Mm. Because you know the other types of martial arts. You have the belts, you have the tests, you have the pumzes, the katas. But how does it work in Capoeira? How do you move from one rank to another? Well, like, like, before going back for people to really uh the uh moving up to one level to the next was very simple right because you train for many many years and then that that was way back right 50 60 70 years uh people the community the masters will acknowledge you you like as a mastery or contra mastery and they will give that title and also you had you know we had different holders in different locations that when you started playing different holders and people start recognizing your your skills and mm-hmm. and your knowledge people start respecting you and calling you master or contra master or professor or whatever and that's how people used to graduate but later yes. on, Capoeira got more and more organized, of course, and more people involved. So there were several masters that developed a way, uh, a belt system that we call cordels or cordões, uh, where we had to go through certain way of training, like in order to become a, at least a professor, you have to have understand about music, you have to play the beating bow, you have to learn certain songs, you have to know about the history. And as far as movement, you do have, a lot of people are testing. So if you know, if you have good skills, if you know you have a good foundation, if you can communicate in a harder, uh, in a way that you understand like how to have the dialogue mm-hmm. you know like call and response you know when to get out of the way and, and really be able to understand the game and then some people they can do that really well some people can do great movements they are great movers but when you put them to actually compete in a harder they are completely lost mm-hmm. so what we, what we are really looking for someone they can understand the fundamentals have the physicality but also have the understanding of how to communicate and be able to to use capoeira effectively in a harder because you can be a great mover but you can be doing something by yourself yeah but when you actually have a chain to react with someone else it it's becomes you know something completely different there's yeah. no synchronize between you and the other person. Right. Mm. Um, how, how many schools do you have so far, uh, my mystery? <laughs> um, well, we have people teaching everywhere. We have people teaching in Brazil, in 
LA, we have several schools. You have in Santa Barbara, you have in San Francisco. Uh, there was someone that I was teaching in Dubai, but he moved now. He back in LA, uh, Japan, Germany. Um, In, so, so yeah. you get you get to travel, uh, Maestri, sometimes to other countries to to give some I classes do. and so on. Oh yeah, I travel all the time, teaching and doing different uh, events, workshops. And all that. Uh, but lately, it's been a little bit challenging because the the pandemic. Because yeah. yes, people are not they are doing less now, but. Uh, the next big event that we're doing, we're doing a capoeira, an international capoeira encounter in Bahia, which is yes. going to be from uh, July 27 mm. to August 1st in Salvador, Bahia. Uh, you're both invited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, so thank it's going to be so. people, yeah, people from all over the world will be there. All the Middle East people that that want to join us, you know, it's going to be an uh, incredible event. It's going to get you trained with all the old, old school teachers, Mesh Boca Rica, Mesh Curio, Mesh Pela da Bomba. There are several, a lot of Bahian legendaries, uh, uh, masters, and also people that are going to be traveling from all over the world. They'll be teaching classes as well. So it's going to be an incredible event. They'll be the first one, uh, actually, in a while because mm. it, we haven't done in, anything uh, in the last few years. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it's like a new beginning now. Yeah, Mestre, uh, when they introduced uh, the, for the first time in video games the character of Eddie, uh, Eddie Gordo. Uh, I think uh, a lot of young people are very excited that uh, <laughs> Capoeira is recognized and it is there in the video games. And it, it became one of the popular, uh, you know, figures in, in the video industry, video game industry. Uh, you as mysteries and, and your colleagues, what did you think of that move when you saw, you know, Capoeira virtually uh, on the screen? <laughs> well... I think it's great and Capoeira is so visual and so different, you know, I knew that eventually it's going to be in video games, movies, mm. all kinds of stuff with Capoeira. Yes. Uh, I feel like actually it took way too long. I think it was going to happen sooner. And, mm. but anyhow, I, I, I think it was, incredible and and as a master uh there are people who say oh you know i don't people are not misrepresenting capoeira there there's going to be always you know this kind of talk as well but i yes. always see like the more we do the more visibility we have the better for the art form better for those that really want to make uh a big impact, you know, so, you know, uh, and Eddie Goro, he, he, he came to me first, but there was a, my, there was a negotiation going on with my agent and financial wasn't, uh, wasn't enough for us. So we decided to pass on. Mm. For and, the character, you mean for the, for the yeah. video game character? So yeah. it was supposed to be you. Yeah, and then wow. I move on. Somebody else did it, which is great. It was wonderful. Who is it? And is it Latif? Yeah. Latif or like like no Latif? Uh, I think the mess, uh Marcelo Caverinha did the first one, right? There mm -hmm. you go, the first one. But the movie itself, the movie is uh, is Latif Latif Crowder. Latif Crowder, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's amazing. Is, it's amazing. Which is an incredible mover, and a next one too. Maybe we we'll, maybe we can try to do with Mark and Latif, so we can we can put all three of us together. 
Yeah, that would be uh, great. And if you, need great. A, if you need a, a punching bag, Hatim and I are here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to like Chief Shoes. So we're supposed to meet very soon as well because we need to talk about a few things. But I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Let, let, let me ask you a difficult question now or a burning question. Just a second. I better watch out. <laughs> Mestri, uh, tell me five things that you know about the Middle East. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's a real you burning you question. You, you didn't see that coming, huh? That, that's a hoda. That's a hoda. <laughs> well, I, what, what I would say, I'm very limited about history but one thing that i know from people from the middle east that are that are being uh connect with students everything i think people they are very honest they're the people that i'm connect with so I, I'm, I'm not saying i cannot talk about in general because i've never yeah. been in that kind of situation but I was honest. Also, they're very upfront and forward with their, you know, if the feelings, if they feel something, which I think is great when you, you're direct about things. Mm. Um, I love the food. You know, we have we have camel meat here. I know. <laughs> I know food, uh, and I know a lot. Of you guys drink a lot of teas. Oh yeah, hot tea. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I think the family value. You know, I think people they're yes. very close. It, it reminds a lot of about here, mm. and yes. you know, people want they they are together a lot. Uh, I think that's important and. I think I have I, one more. What's up, the next one? I, I, uh, I think now you have you have a solid reason to visit the Middle East. Uh -huh. You, you I, yeah. I'll, so I'll, I'll, so I'll, we I'll we want you. you to come. We want you to come and see by yourself and experience the Middle East. And I'm sure it's going to change a lot of perspective in your life. Hmm. Okay. I'll I'll take the challenge. That's an invitation you, from us. You okay. you 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 bring you you come along with uh, Latif and uh, Mark De Cascos and come and do the show in Muscat. Come, and I'm, <laughs> okay. I promise you, you're gonna like it. <laughs> okay. And, and you're not gonna get beef and broccoli. You're gonna get better food. <laughs> <laughs> First thing what we do, uh, we, we, we'll get together to do this uh, live together, and then we'll figure out uh, the next step. I would love to uh, to come visit. Um, yeah. Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll work it out somehow. Maybe we can do a seminar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we can work another seminar and. Somewhere out there, I'm not sure. What, what, one, one information uh, that uh, might be interesting to you about Oman, where we're coming from, me and Ali, is that uh, Oman ruled part of Africa, which is the coastline of Africa uh, mm. in, in the island of Zanzibar. So we have roots in Africa. Actually, nice. our, both uh, both me and Ali, our parents were born in Africa, and wow. uh, a lot of people here in in, o in Oman specifically, they speak the Swahili language. Nice. So, nice. W when you come to Oman, you will feel connected because Absolutely. we have I'm a lot sure. of connection with with Africa. So people speak the same language as you. Wow. 
in Swahili, you know, flag is called bandera. Bandera? Yeah, like Portuguese. Yes. No, I, did, I, I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so th there's a Portuguese influence or, or, or what? Yeah. We were invaded by uh, the, the Portuguese here in Oman, the coast of Oman. Yeah. And then, okay. so, sorry, we have we had to kick them away. <laughs> wow. Well, we had to uh, do Miluaji <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I think I think it's all the language connection at the end of the day. Like for even right. you have connection to even Hindi. Uh, you know, what's key in, in Portuguese? Shavi, 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 Shavi. Yeah. It's Shavi. The same. In Hindi, it's Chavi, so it's, it's almost oh, the same wow. thing. Yeah, so there is. See, that's the thing. Now I'm I'm learning so much. <laughs> See? That is two free classes of capoeira. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we should now, definitely we, stay we... in touch for this capoeira. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, we should definitely uh, get in I need touch. I'll give you guys back to it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, having said that, what would be your advice to people who want to start capoeira or just thinking about it? Well, a few things about capoeira. The first advice be yourself. Second advice don't compare yourself with anyone else. Wow. Third advice. Practice without thinking, I need to do this or I need to do that. Just be in the moment and understand that it's a journey. Yeah. Because oh, I, I think the what I see a lot in Capoeira, people, they come in and they immediately get discouraged because they want to be like somebody else. Mm. They don't want to be, you know, what's so interesting, you know, <laughs> they don't want to be who they are. They want to be somebody else. You can only they be wanna do, I, I was like they that. Do, they, I, I was like they that wanna, before. <laughs> they want to do triple backflip in the air. Right. And, and they, oh, I don't know how to do this. I, I, the reason you're here is to learn. And yeah. you have to allow yourself to learn at your own pace. So don't judge. Don't compare. Just allow the training and in, in the learning come through you. And you'll be all right. Hatim, I think this applies to you as well because you always see yourself as Silvero. <laughs> and he, he even, every time we play Capoeira, he sings that song. I don't know, Quebra Geneva, Quebra. So, Maestre, before we end today's show, we asked you so many questions. Do you have any questions for us? Is there well, anything you want to know? I, I, I'd like to know how you came up with this idea to, to do this show and, you oh. know, how, what's the connection? What was the inspiration to, to have that kind of tool to communicate with the world? It's, it's a humble start. I don't know, Hatem, do you want to talk about it or? <clears throat> it, or it, it, was your, it was your idea, Ali, so you go ahead. <laughs> It, it all started uh, through this pandemic, actually, when, when we started you know, working from home and using all the softwares, teams, whatever. And then uh, I started watching YouTube and I saw people you know, doing a podcast and suddenly I see them talking virtually to other people. And I thought, yeah, this is a good idea. Why don't you know, I start this as well? So I, sp I, I contacted Hatem and I told him, Hatem, uh, let us you know, do a chit chat. Uh, where we gather our friends, well, let's have like three or four people, and we have a chat every week. We talk, and Hatem said, "I think let us start with two, better than you know more because of the commitment thing." So then it's just me and Hatem. We started. We did three or four episodes, and then we yeah. said, "You know what? Let us invite guests." So that's where this uh, chain of guests came. So every time we try to invite. Uh, someone who is inspiring, someone who has ideas maybe to share. And uh, surprise, surprise, you're one of those inspirations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. We, we've, had, we've had so far more than uh, 25 nationalities on the show. And uh, we wanted uh, to bridge the gap between the East and the West. 
So there's a lot of misconceptions about the Middle East and there's a lot of uh, gap, uh, you know, between the cultures. So we wanted to close that gap and bring everybody together under one roof. And uh, wow. this, uh, this program allowed us to, to do that. So we got to right. talk to people from around the world, to hear new ideas, to, uh, you know, to accept, uh, you know, the differences that are there between people. And I think so far, me and Ali were so blessed to meet people such as yourself and others Thank as you. well. And we learned a lot. I think uh, the amount of knowledge that we learn, we learned uh, through this program, you, don't, you can't learn in university as, and school. It's, it's right. personal experience. True. So we want to continue this. We want to continue this, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. inshallah. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if you know what inshallah means. Because uh, you might hear Arab people say this all the time. It means if God wills. God will, uh, yeah. <laughs> God willing. Yeah. So, so that's the first lesson for you in Arabic. Yeah, well, Al there we go. It's still learning. <laughs> Ali, b before, before we leave, can you play the video of uh, my brother Hisham doing the hoda? With Hamid, do you have it? Uh, just a second. My brother was yeah. very good at uh, Capoeira and uh, our friend what Hamid as well. What happened to all, all of you? Not, not <laughs> this one. Not, not, yeah, not it's, this it's, one, Ali. It's coming, it's coming, after, <laughs> it's coming after this. Let's, <laughs> this, let's, this is an embarrassment. Let's take, no, the pain, let's take the pain of watching this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one. This Which is my brother, is brother, the one, the one with the black trousers. Okay. And we even created a T-shirt. You see, you see, you see wow. the logo. We made a logo. <laughs> so we were very. We gotta give, you, you guys gotta give back to it. Let's let's make this happen. Yeah, yeah. That's the way. That's the way to go. Mm. Oh, nice. <laughs> that is Middle East. See. <laughs> <laughs> we That's we so really great. want to thank you maestri uh, uh, for your thank time you. your valuable time and being here and uh, i hope one day we're going to meet in person and yeah. uh, give you a very big hug <laughs> yeah and, and anytime you come to la just please let me know so let's get together sure, sure. thank Inshallah. you thank Inshallah. you thank yeah. you again uh, thanks first of all of being uh, our maestre for for the last oh tw thank you <laughs> twenty years I think Tw yeah more than that more yeah, than more than twenty years let's continue this conversation and uh, I'm gonna talk sure. to Mark and Latif and also I'm gonna give you guys back to training so let's uh, let's do so it we'll stay uh, also if you if you have my uh, I have my Instagram. Uh, the personal one is Mestre Main Santo. Okay, maybe if you can forward it to me and then uh Yeah, I'll put it in, put it in the dis description. Yeah. And and if yeah, there's if any any it... anything that you want me to add in the description, uh we'll do that as well for our viewers. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, so thanks you again, obrigado. Obrigado. <laughs> thanks so much. We we'll stay in touch and uh until next time. Until next time. <laughs> until Inshallah. Next time. Take care. Assalamu <laughs> right, alaikum. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, what an amazing guest. <laughs> yes, I think it brought it brought back uh, very good memories of childhood uh, when we started training capoeira when we were very young and doing the backflips and uh, you know good old days. injuring. It, Injuring In, our hands ourselves. and feet all the time. Hatim, yeah, Hatim, so times. Hatim, you used to do backflip. Can you do that? Yes, sir. Well, it's in the past tense, Ali. <laughs> Don't bring up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I think, I think, I think, Ali. Now, if anybody looks at me, he does. He, he can never believe that I used to do backflips. But uh, you never know. Dreams can come true, and one day Dreams maybe I can. Dreams can come uh, true, and I think we should take uh, his uh, invitation also seriously. So maybe uh, you know. I would. A, I would love to. It's a, it's an honor. It's an honor to have that. You know. 
to be trained. I would love him. to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, Ali, thank you very much always for uh, facilitating this show and getting us uh, inspiring people to talk to. And I think uh, we learn from one another and uh, maybe one day we can make a difference in this world, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. And uh, I would like to thank all our viewers uh, who watched and I apologize for not taking your questions because, you know, we got so in- involved with the communication. So thanks to all of you. See, uh, I see my brothers also here. Faham. And we have uh, Ahmed al Mutani here. Uh, we have uh, my brother Saif. And we got many people here, mashallah. So thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot to all of you. And uh, please do not forget to like and share. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that indication button so you can get all the notifications from Ummati Station. Obrigado, everybody. And ciao. <laughs> Salam. Salam alaikum. Excellent.